Hello and welcome to the 2022 Greenfield Youth Film Festival. My name is Jill Greenfield Feldman and I'm the executive director of the festival. 2022 was quite a year for many of our schools. It was the first time that many of the students returned to in-person classes as well as having full access to their school's studio and equipment. We're inspired by the film students of our region and the spirit that the show must always go on and there's always a story to tell through filmmaking. And now in our 14th year, that hasn't changed. This year, close to 20 high schools throughout the southeastern Pennsylvania region used their high school halls, their neighborhoods, and just about anywhere they could find to shoot. They created dozens and dozens of amazing films, some of which you are about to see. The awards tonight will be presented by some of our esteemed judges and valued workshop presenters who the students met virtually in the fall for their day of learning. These people are professionals in their field, and most of them rave about how much they love to volunteer their time every year to watch the films and give feedback to the students. On behalf of the students and teachers, I thank all of the judges and presenters who make time for this. To the mentors, the parents, the families, and most of all the students, thank you for making the film festival work and succeed, and for spending the hours that you do to create products that we can all watch and appreciate. In a time where there's so much going on in the world that brings us down, you give us art and therefore hope for a better world to come. Finally, thanks to my partners at the Greenfield Foundation and at the Upper Dublin Education Foundation who make this event possible. I now welcome Michelle Boaz, Executive Director of the Education Foundation, who will say a few words. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Greenfield Youth Film Festival. I'm Michelle Boaz, Executive Director of the Upper Dublin Education Foundation. LA has the Oscars, New York has the Tonys, and Upper Dublin is so very lucky to host the Greenies. Our mission at the Upper Dublin Education Foundation is to support unforgettable learning experiences in our district. The Greenfield Youth Film Festival is a shining example of how we can positively impact students' lives even beyond Upper Dublin. We are grateful to be part of this extraordinary program thanks to a very generous grant from the Greenfield Foundation. This festival started with five participating schools in 2008. Today, we have 17. The depth and evolution of this program is due to Jill Feldman. Her unwavering leadership, passion, and vision has really made this festival what it is. Upper Dublin will always be grateful for the gift of the Greenies. To this year's filmmakers, thank you for allowing your creative voices to be heard in a thoughtful, transformative way Congratulations on all your hard work during this process and for letting us have a glimpse of what's in your hearts and minds. Here, we will celebrate you. Enjoy. Thank you, Michelle. Tonight's program will be similar to that of previous years. We will spend less time talking and more time showing the incredible work produced by our region's student filmmakers. You will see all films in their entirety and all winners will receive a cash or a gift card. We have asked some of the nominees to record an acceptance video in case they're film one, and you will see some of those as well. Mentors will receive all feedback that the judges provided. This includes not only compliments, but also suggestions on how students can improve on their work. They will also get lists of films that were nominated for awards but did not win. Now get comfy, grab your popcorn, and let's go to the movies, Greeny style. Whether it's a believable scream, focus on lines of dialogue or just helping the audience feel the movie through the eyes of the character. Acting is what draws us into the story and keeps us there. This year we had some really talented acting to enjoy, but this one particular film really deserved an award. When watching the performances, one judge said it was great to see a well-written short this beautifully acted. I thought it was a really good film, really good acting, directing, and writing. Had a really nice flow to it, some narrative ups and downs, and ended at the perfect moment. I really enjoyed this film. So the Greenie for best acting goes to The Uncomfortable Silence, which starred Darry Demchuk, Colin Hussey, and Eddie Kenna. The filmmakers were Luke Whitney and Billy Kubaki who are students at Middle Bucks Institute of Technology. The winning filmmakers and actors will receive Amazon gift card prizes. I really hope you enjoy this film uh, and the acting as much as I did. So feel free to watch it now. Enjoy.
Hello guys, welcome. Can I start you up with something to drink? I'd like water for right now, thank you. Um, I'll have a water too. All right, I'll be right back. Uh, I, I was worried that after four months of talking, you turn out to be a 55-year-old man. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's, what's the weather like in Maine this time of year? Um, it's normal. Basically the same as North Dakota. Alright guys, here you go. I thought we'd be able to have a smooth conversation. Yeah. But I kind of like when there isn't one. What do you mean? Well, that uncomfortable silence it can tell you a lot about a person. Uh, how? I don't know, it's just that whenever it happens, it reveals who someone truly is. Okay, but what if they change who they are to break the silence. Well, yeah, but when you can just sit there and share a silence with someone, you know I have someone special. So, how's the silence with me? We're not there yet. What? I was just thought of a story. Tell me. No, I... I don't think we're there yet. Well, now I have to hear it. Okay, well, once I was on a first date and we went bowling. Uh, so it was my turn. And so I picked up the ball and, well, I, I dropped it on her foot. Uh, yeah, I, I then had to drive her to the hospital. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, that, that wasn't the silence that you'd like it. I didn't learn a single thing about her other than the fact that she was extremely angry. <laughs> How could someone do that? I, I don't know, it just, it just slipped. Sounds like you have the strength of a 12 year old. Maybe I do. <laughs> Remember Mario Galaxy? What? Mario Galaxy, the Wii game. I mean, I know what it is, but where'd that come from? Well, I, I was thinking about when I was 12, and then that just came into my head. I never really liked it much. Why not? I don't know, I guess it was just too difficult for me. I enjoyed jumping on the Goombas and hearing the sound that they made when they died. Really? Should I be concerned? Maybe, uh, you should try asking the guy in my trunk. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah. I do. and I've spent more than 30 years behind the cameras and microphones as a documentary and national news producer. When it comes to documentaries, it doesn't matter if you're interviewing a president or a guy working at the local pool. Everyone has a story to tell, and in a good documentary, you let them tell the story and you get out of the way. Tonight, we're proud to show three great examples of what effective documentaries should look like. First, I'll read some judges' comments for each film and announce the film's name, its creator, and their school. Then, we'll show all three films. 
The top three documentary filmmakers will have a choice of a cash prize or a gift card. The judges used words like fascinating, superb, compelling, and enthusiastic to describe the third place documentary. The winner of third place for best documentary is Going Around by Josh Robinson, Springfield Township High School. The runner-up for Best Documentary also grabbed the attention of many judges. They called it beautiful and uplifting. In second place for Best Documentary is The Importance of Happiness by Joanna Marie Hennigan, also from Springfield Township High School. And in first place as this year's Best Documentary, judges heralded this wonderful film that both informs and lifts up. And the Greenie for the Best Documentary of 2022 is Hero for Humanity by Sophia Bekayako Meyer, student at the George School. Now, let's look at all three films in their entirety. Radio check. Loud and clear. Josh, you see that plane there? Uh, yeah, it has two stories. Maybe. I think they stopped building that plane. Uh, why? I don't know. Look it up. This is the final boarding call for American Airlines Flight 2594 service to San Diego. That was it. That was a spark for my fire. My name is Josh Robinson, and I'm a flight student at Wings Field in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. Uh, I fly a Cessna 172 Skyhawk, so I currently have just about 50 flight hours, and I'm very close to my PPL. I would say Josh has been interested in all kinds of vehicles, including planes, trains, and automobiles from the time he was first born. It's pretty much all he does. Eat, sleep, school, planes. So my first instructor was Elliot Knapp. My other instructor that I moved on to after Elliot was Stelios. Josh is very young and passionate about aviation. So he's pretty proficient because he spends a lot of time working at home and reading. We gave Josh a discovery flight for his 17th birthday. I was scared for my first takeoff in a small plane just because, you know, they're so small, they get knocked around a lot. And also being in a single engine plane is also a little scary at first, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, the hardest thing when I first took control of a plane was really staying straight and level. It sounds simple, but it's really difficult because you have to, to look at multiple things at the same time. It's not just looking at your speedometer and calling it a day. I applied for an aviation scholarship I would say upwards of three to four times, and eventually I earned the scholarship. Uh, Josh would not be flying right now if it was not for the scholarship. Wings traffic, Cessna 91 Vex here, turning final runway 24 Wings. So, this, can you help me, bro? Yeah, what do you want? That airspeed's so low. You okay? Dude, I'm going to. Oh, what the hell? Are we too high? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just go around. Wings traffic, Cessna 91 Vex here, going around Wings. Me and Stelios just got down from the flight. Our previous flight was a little gusty. The winds were all over the place on final approach. Uh, I had to take controls from Josh and we had to go around and then I ended up doing the landing. A go around is when you abort a landing. Uh, the landing was unsafe, unstabilized, or just didn't feel good about it. And we're sitting there debriefing, filling out the logbook, uh, getting ready for next lesson. And we hear fighter jets circling in the airport. And in the middle of suburban Pennsylvania, that is not normal. And we see an airplane on final, um, it's a Piper and um, it was coming into land because uh, it broke the TFR. A TFR is a temporary flight restriction. If you bust a TFR without permission, uh, then generally you'll be intercepted by fighter jets. So right when the plane was coming on final, it uh, incurred a power off stall, I would say 20 to 30 feet above the runway. You can't recover from a power off stall at that altitude. Power off stall is when you're coming in for landing and the wing loses too much airspeed and essentially the nose just kind of drops. To be honest, after the plane crashed and we called 911, we were standing by the FBO. Um, and, you know, I, I told my mom because if this was on the news, like Wingsfield Airport, my mom would have been like, is, is that Josh? I could tell Josh was a little shaken up by what he saw. So I, you know, just listened to him tell me what happened. And then I put it out of my head. I really tried not to think about it because it just reinforced how quickly things could change if something were to happen to Josh when he was flying. After the plane crashed, the next day I got up right away because I knew that mentally it's going to have to happen if I'm gonna continue my license. And eventually after two or three landings in repetition, I was back to normal. So I hope what came out of that incident was that the instructors, I hope that they work with Josh, explain to him what happened, 
showed him the cause and effect and that had to not have that ever happen to him. So I'm hoping it was a teachable moment. So my favorite experience with Elliot had to have been either soloing or flying to New York City at nighttime. Uh, I first soloed on October 23rd and that was a big, big milestone in my aviation journey. There was tons of anticipation, but I knew like I just had to take off because once I took off, you know, you have to land. Just focus on what you're doing too is kind of what I was also worried about, um, making sure I didn't run into the power plant, um, stayed clear of the hospital, and, and landed the plane without hitting any uh, telephone lines. I would have to say I think the coolest thing Josh has done since he started flying would be the nighttime flight he took around New York City. We did the Hudson River and you could see New York City, uh, parts of Times Square, the Statue of Liberty, the George Washington Bridge. We flew right over Newark International Airport and for an aviation geek that that's amazing. The excitement he had when he shared some of the photos from that flight just really made it seem like a pretty unique experience to have at this young age. The biggest reason I enjoy flying is the freedom it gives you. Um, it's kind of like getting that driver's license when you're 16 and getting that permit. So in the future with my license, I, you know, I want to take friends up, show them the thrills of aviation. Uh, I want to go fly to Sky Manor and get breakfast one day. I want to take my mom to Reading Airport and meet up with her friend and go have dinner at the local airport uh, restaurant. In the future, um, possibly a career at the airlines, maybe be flying private jets. Uh, you know, it's all up in the air. Would I ever fly with Josh? Um, I'd actually rather fly Spirit than fly with Josh. Um, if I'm being completely serious, I would probably fly with Josh eventually. Um, I would go up with Josh, but not until he is a more experienced pilot. The advice that I give somebody who's interested in aviation is it's expensive, but it's worth it. Just go to your local airport, and I guarantee that they have some kind of a flight school program there. So it's now 717 Golf, wind 2608, runway 22, clear for takeoff, fly runway heading. Clear for takeoff, runway 22, fly ru runway heading Cessna 717 Golf, student pilot. This was not an ad for aviation. It was a representation of my journey and its ups and downs. Aviation is unique, simple, scary, and beautiful. When flying in the sky, the possibilities are endless and the adventures are infinite. What is happiness? <laughs> Good morning, Springfield. My name is Joanna Marie Hennigan. I'm involved in dance, theater, and almost every aspect of film and media studies at my school. I love to make other people happy wherever I am. My days always start off by telling the dad joke of the morning at 7.39 a.m. while most of my friends are just rolling over. Good morning, Springfield. I have a fear of speed bumps. I'm slowly getting over them. Get to home room. I live for Joanna's jokes in the morning. I believe Joanna told me she wanted to do a joke every day. At first she kind of said it like, oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think she was hoping for a, no, oh, great idea, which is what she got. I used to be addicted to not showering. Now I can say I'm finally clean. I, I have a slideshow of, of funny things and I, I never implemented any of it. And so when she came to me and said, I, I want to do a joke of the day, Let's do it, you know? I think it's a great idea. I, I guess primarily, I'm a big fan. Some would say they're dad jokes, but they're more than dad jokes. My goal is to make at least one person smile every day. This mindset is inspired by my grandma, whom I call Mama. Growing up, she was the light of my life. She took care of me and is always there for me. As we both aged, the roles have almost reversed, as I try my best to take care of whatever she needs to return the favor of everything she has done for me. She taught me how to find happiness in my own life and inspires me to help others find their happiness. Why is it important to make other people happy? Mm -hmm. Because it, there's too much stuff going on in the world today to be involved in all that. You gotta keep your spirits up. You know, you, that's what counts, you know? You can't be fighting with everybody all the time. My personal pursuit of happiness is forever ongoing. I've struggled with mental illness for the better majority of my life. I face family issues, death of loved ones, and serious internal hardships and conflicts with my own body image and dark thoughts. However, I've always been able to acknowledge that others also face these hardships. I try my best to take it upon myself to help others in ways that I wished I could have been helped in my hard times. Was when she started having panic attacks, which we didn't know were panic attacks at the time. She had 
thoughts in her head that weren't there and she couldn't go outside. She couldn't go to family events. She couldn't do really anything for two years. So our lives kind of came to a halt while Joanna went through this situation. Because she, she couldn't verbalize it and we didn't know what was going on. Now to see her thrive in everything she does, going out more, helping people more. I never see her at home, so she's out. And it just, it's just a journey. I can't wait to see where it takes her. Joanna initially, as a sophomore, she would take setbacks to heart and get very upset about things. And now as a senior, she's much better able to roll with the punches and say, okay, this didn't go so well. She has this aura of positivity around her. And she, she finds a way to share that positivity and that um, joy with others. Even when you're not having like the best of days, um, I always kind of remember how like I felt um, like when when I saw Joanna Joanna have a smile on her face um, and it would just kind of uplift you uh, I see this more in the classroom where she can laugh at herself which is I think one of the most important things that we need to do as humans especially in today's world with so much anxiety and Joanna helps students see that it's okay to laugh at yourself and that is one of the greatest gifts that she could give to a student body. The crazy time that we're in right now um, but you'll still hear Joanna laugh 20 times a day uh, and you can hear it from another room which is which is awesome too. Um, so she definitely finds joy and that's that's uh, such an important trait to have such an important aspect of life you have to we're in a small high school here any teacher in a building like this takes notice of someone like Joanna I mean you know a smile is best when it's shared happiness is so important and it can be found anywhere what makes me happy like grandchildren construction being with my friends or my family uh, music and people. Working out makes me happy. To give to other people. Spending time with my family and with my friends and riding my boogie board. Laughing. I, I, I enjoy laughing, uh, making connections with students. Me and my kids. It has to be aviation. Happiness can be so easy to pass by and ignore. Why? Happiness should be observed and celebrated and looked for. We hear about the feeling in music all the time, like Happiness Begins by the Jonas Brothers or Pursuit of Happiness by Kid Cudi. But what does it really mean to feel it for yourself? For some, it's riches and glory. For others, it comes to listening to Taylor Swift on a rainy Sunday morning or grabbing a cup of coffee with loved ones. For some, it's telling a dad joke or teaching a child how to act. This is the importance of happiness. What does Thor wear under his pants? Oh, I don't know. Thunderwear. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I heard the award for best neckwear went to... It was a tie. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'd like to thank the Greenfield Foundation for this award and the opportunity to present my work. I want to thank the administration from Springfield Township High School, Dr. Ritt, Mr. LaRocco, and Dr. Z for giving me the opportunity to produce and create and immerse myself in film and media studies at SCHS and supporting all my ideas. I'd especially like to thank Marlene Thornton and Mr. Meter, my school mom and dad for teaching me literally everything I know and providing me with all the opportunities to succeed. From supporting my dad jokes in the morning to helping me just through high school life, they have always been there for me and I am so, so grateful. I want to thank my storytelling through film class, especially Josh Robinson and Dylan Costello um, for helping me stay sane through the editing process. <laughs> thank you so much to all my teachers at SCHS, especially those I bugged about interviews and filming and who still said such kind things about me through this whole process. Thank you to my mom and sister for always supporting me and bringing me to where I am today and my mom for <laughs> inspiring me and um, helping me show kindness to others. I also, just like to thank everyone at SCHS for uh, laughing or rolling their eyes at me every morning for my jokes. <laughs> thank you. Doing immigration work does help people who are in need of having an advocate, having a voice.
I may never see most of my clients ever again. And I'm satisfied with that, knowing that I've left them in a better position than the way that they came to me. Compassion is contagious, and by living every day to fight justice, my mom, Sheena Bediaco, is an immigration attorney who runs her own practice in Yardley, Pennsylvania. Born to an immigrant father and American-born mother, this field is very close to home for her. She has been practicing since 2002 with the goal of upholding the law while empathizing with others. The immigration system is an extremely tricky process to navigate, with a significant number of bureaucratic steps and ever-changing policies. This process would be difficult for your average citizen to navigate, but is nearly impossible for someone new to the United States. Because of this, immigration attorneys are absolutely essential to defending the human right of asylum. A refugee is defined as anyone fleeing their home country, fleeing war, violence, or persecution, and looking for safety. Article 14 of the United Nations Declaration for Human Rights protects asylum seekers, and we have globally agreed to protect those people needing safety. Unfortunately, even though the United States does have the capacity to protect many of these people, in 2020, we granted asylum to as few as 3,000 refugees of 30,000 seeking asylum. This is why lawyers play such an important role as human rights defenders protecting individual asylum seekers, making sure that others believe they do have the legal right to seek safety in the country. The rule of law is essential to our political structure, especially as it protects the social and cultural dignity of all humans. Jorge Cardozo is one of Ms. Bediaco's clients whom she helps obtain asylum in the United States. In our interview, Jorge described to us the suffering that forced him to flee Mexico. In his hometown of Guanajuato, the gang Narcos wished to punish his family for installing metal bars into their neighbors' windows, in turn preventing home break-ins. His father decided to stay true to his morals and defy the gang. As a consequence of this stance, his family was decapitated and gored one by one. Jorge knew that it was only a matter of time before they came for him next. Jorge was only 18 at the time, but to this day, when he closes his eyes, he can still see the red of his family's blood splattered on the ground. When he first met Ms. Bediaco, he feared that she would only focus on legal rules and processes and be less interested in his story and humanity. He soon realized that she genuinely empathized with him and wanted him to succeed. Her commitment to human rights, to treating him with dignity and respect, and her ongoing perseverance for the life he deserves gave Jorge the faith that his life is worth living. To effectively change what is unjust in the world, it is vital to have people that are willing and passionate to advocate for change themselves. Compassion and perspective must be considered when making laws, and global humanity must be upheld. Our world needs more people like my mom to stand up for those without a voice and to use the law and compassion simultaneously. Every person deserves to be treated decently. And if you're able to, because of your skill set, help someone else that is unable to for various reasons, lack of education, lack of language, lack of mental capability, lack of resources, then why wouldn't you want to try to help make something better for somebody else? Hi, my name is Sophia and I was a director of Hero for Humanity. Thank you so much to the Greenfield Film Festival for honoring my film, and I am so grateful that I can share something like this with all of you. This film is not only important because it talks about a very important message, it also highlights someone that is very influential to me, my mom. I am very grateful that I can use my art for a change, and I encourage all of you to do the same. I'd like to thank all of those that were involved, including Faye Joseph, Kieran Maloney, Neha Kalakutla, Dashiell Atwood, Zachary Spangler, and Silas Kennedy. And of course, my teachers, Scott Saradarian and Meredith Baldy. Thank you so much again for honoring my film, 
and I encourage all of you to try to make the world a better place through your art. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Sheila Srinivas. I'm here to present an award. Um, I am a writer at Disney Television working on my own show. Um, this year we have a special award for a film that went old school. The film being recognized as best silent film also received nominations for best narrative, director, funniest film, and cinematography. The judges called it, quote, a treat and also referred to it as having a perfect score, title sequence, and even grain effects. Well paced, wonderfully done, very clever. This year's Greenie for Best Silent Film goes to Madge the Magnificent by Connor Lamison, a student at Owen J. Roberts High School. Congrats to Connor and to Gianna DeLudo, who plays Madge. Congrats. Hi guys, my name's Scott Curry. I'm a producer here in Philadelphia, and I'm here to give out the 2022 Greeny Award for Funniest Film. If I told you something was funny, you'd probably go out of your way not to laugh. Being funny is, well, funny. See what I did there? I tried to be funny, I'm not funny. It's been said writing a comedy is actually one of the hardest films to write because writing jokes that you think are funny just won't get the laughs. And that's what makes this year's winner for funniest film even more impressive. The judges said, okay, you got me. I had no idea where this was going uh, with a minute eight runtime. 
Uh, it went to places one didn't think it would go. Great build, great timing, great edit, great presentation, great punchline. I laughed out loud. The 2022 Greenie for Funniest Movie goes to the film Soaring by Vince Hessenthaler, Abington High School. Congratulations, Vince. You win. Uh, this year's uh, I'm going to be giving out to, as an award also a one-hour consultation with me uh, so to explain how I got to where I am. And hopefully uh, Vince can do the same and even go further. Uh, looking forward to speaking with you. Thanks everybody who participated. It was a great year. See you again next year. Spielberg, Lucas, Scorsese, Hitchcock, Tarantino, Nolan, Kubrick, Lee, Jackson. Chances are, if you're watching this, you know something about films, and you know that they're some of the greatest directors in film history. Directing a film requires a mix of vision, time management, and collaboration, unlike just about anything else we can think of, which is why this year's winner for Best Director is so impressive. The judges had tons of compliment for this film crew. Here are some of the quotes. Wow, you both did an excellent job on this project. I can see the co collaboration between director and writer, and it shines beautifully on screen. Every shot was thought out. Every angle was well executed. A fantastic job carrying this story from opening to final frame. Great job with the voiceover commentary throughout this piece. It was thoughtful, carefully planned, and quite funny. Your technical talents are extremely noticeable in this project. Excellent use of camera angles and lighting. You carried each frame through both composition and movement with a very strong technical understanding. You're excellent filmmakers. The Greenie for Best Director goes to Reunion de l'Amour by Zainab Olijde with Claire Roach, Hyatt Sparks Woodford, Amani Speller, and Lauren Weitzer of George School. Wes Anderson, move over. Let's watch this well done film. In the year 1977, a promising collective of first years arrived at George School. Although initially not fond of each other, throughout their years in high school, they slowly found ways to tolerate one another. Besides forming little to no connections, they became the prominent senior class of 1977, forever known to the school. Today marks their high school reunion following their graduation day. M.D., a child prodigy since the age of five, when he once calculated and filed his parents' taxes instead of indulging his babysitter, he is currently working as a criminology professor at the University of Pomona. In high school, he was top of his class, earning honor roll every semester, being a 17-time state champ debate captain and even student class president his junior and senior year. Since his first debate, MD has worn a bow tie every day 
and still fails to center it. Dirk only barely managed to graduate with the help of MD. They were best friends. Originally, because in the 10th grade, MD was obligated to tutor Dirk for the upcoming final, and are still best friends now because of MD's extensive knowledge on the physics of shooting a free throw. Dirk and Rain, his twin sister, could not be more different. At George School, Rain had always secretly fawned over MD. You could catch her at any time of day spying on him from a distance. Since the age of seven, Rain has not allowed herself to step into the sun due to a traumatizing case of sunburn one summer. On days when she must go outside, she never forgets her umbrella, gifted to her by the family of her first client as a mortician. Rain liked to call it admiring. However, Faye never did shy away from calling her a stalker. Not much is known about Faye or her family. Her hair was always parted just enough to the right so that it could cover her missing ear, allegedly lost in fighting Dimitri. Throughout high school, rumors swirled that she and her family were affiliated with the Yugoslavian Secret Service and procured a formidable fortune there throughout high school. Rumors swirled that she and her family were affiliated with the Yugoslavian Secret Service and procured a formidable fortune there. The truth has still oh. never been disclosed. The only one Faye has ever confided in is Clementine, her best friend. Clementine is not actually her real name. It is a nickname she received in the sixth grade once her class realized she had been eating only Clementines for five straight years after she read an article that one Clementine contains 20 grams of protein. She has always been a gym fanatic and even trained Dirk in high school to help him earn scholarships, which in turn garnered Clementine street cred, as Dirk called it. As they all met together for one last time, the unthinkable happens. There has been a murder. Who could it be? What is their motive? And most importantly, will the reunion dinner be a la carte or prefix? Hi everyone, my name is Ian Mallitz and I have the distinct pleasure of being one of your judges for this year's 2022 Greenfield Youth Film Festival. For over 14 years of this festival, students have heard some very important advice when it comes to making a film. It's not just about the shots, it's not just about the lighting or the lenses, and it's not just about the editing. None of that matters if there's not a good story first. This year's film for Best Storytelling was also nominated for Best Editing, Best Acting, Best Narrative, but the judges all mentioned the story. Also noted was the great camera movement. The Greenie for Best Storytelling goes to Breathe by Charlie Schultz, a senior at Hatboro Horsham High School. Congratulations, Charlie. You did a great job this year. Now, let's watch the film. So, are you going to come hang out at Sam's tonight? We haven't all hung out in weeks. I know, I know, I'm trying. It's just, I have practice after school until 6, a calc test tomorrow, a huge physics project due Wednesday, and a full book report due Friday. Maya, do you even have time to breathe? <laughs> Very funny. I'll breathe when I'm asleep, or when I don't have my entire future riding on a track scholarship and my GPA. Just come hang out for a little. We miss you. I'll try. Talk to you guys later. Bye.
baby, you had us worried there for a minute. What happened? Maya, you were in an accident. Uh, not too serious, but we wanted to keep you here for observation a little longer. My head hurts. Well, that's to be expected. You had a concussion. We're just checking out to see if you have some fractured ribs and a fractured femur. What? Yeah. No, no, no. I have a meet sweetie. tonight. Yeah, sweetie. I'm sorry to say, but you won't be running for the next eight to ten weeks. I'm sorry. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh, doctor, can we have a second, please? Of course. No, well, I can't just sit here. What about colleges? What about scholarships? Sweetie, we'll worry about college later. Right now, you just have to rest and get better, okay? We'll worry about college later. It's bad, Jenna. Eight to ten weeks. That's until the end of the school year. That is a while. It's not just a while. I won't get the scholarship. I can't even walk without this stupid boot for another month. Well, have you considered that it might not be so bad? What? Maya, you don't even have a second to relax all day. You're up until three every day and then right back up at six with no breath in between. I may have some broken ribs, but I can breathe just fine. <sighs> That's not what I'm saying. Then what are you saying? I'm saying you need a break from everything. You know, when we all heard about the accident, we were really scared. I mean, I haven't seen you out of school in weeks, and Sam hasn't in months. We used to spend every weekend together in middle school. And you're busy, I get it, but we thought you might have died. You could have been dead, and you haven't lived a life in months. Lived a life? Yes. You go from one place to the next, to the next, to the next, and you never stop once to look around at how much things have changed. Jenna, I... I know. I'm not mad. I'm not. It's just... I really thought I lost you, and I don't ever want to think that ever again. At the very least, not without knowing that you're actually happy. I, I gotta go, Em. I love you. I love you. So I was thinking... About? Well, I obviously don't have track anymore. Plus, all of my teachers have either given me extensions or have exempted me from my work. Oh my god, I never thought this day would happen. What? Are you, Maya Kingsley, asking little old us to come hang out? Well, yes, Jenna, I am. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was had some ideas. We could go bowling, we could go to the mall, we could go to the movies. What are you guys thinking? Sam, she still can't walk. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking we could watch some stuff at my house. I haven't seen a movie in forever. What has come out since I've started living under a rock? Okay, okay, I'll make a list. Have you have you seen Infinity War? Infinity what? Okay, we'll, we'll start there. I'll meet you at your house. Jenna, Sam, hi, how are you? So good to see you. Oh my gosh, I love you. Thank you. Hi, Mama. Hi, baby. How are you? Thank you for bringing my friends over. I haven't seen them in forever. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Come on, let's start starting up these movies. I'll grab the chips. I'll get them for you. It's so nice to see the three of you guys together again. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? It has. But I'm wondering, what made you invite them over? After the accident, I sort of just realized, you know, life is short. Oh, uh, honey, you're not going anywhere anytime soon. I know, Mom. It's just, I was in the accident because I was rushing, and I realized I need to slow down, take a breath, and enjoy the life I have while I have it. Okay. I love you, too. Right, go have fun. So a few years ago, the festival coordinators borrowed from a statewide film festival where it was required for the filmmakers to submit a movie poster to accompany their uh, film. Um, we have gotten a ton of submissions this year and there were some really great ones, but the judges decided that uh, one in particular uh, stood out. So take a look at this poster. Um, the Greenie this year for best movie poster goes to Caleb Ham from Oxford Area High School for his movie poster for Porcelain. So next up is sound design. Uh, sound is an element of filmmaking that can make you jump, make you cry, make you scared, or just make you feel awesome inside. 
the sound design on this film that the judges selected um, was so good that one of them actually said, excellent work, great original concept, and that so much of the storytelling was done visually and that only necessary details were conveyed while others were left to the imagination. Uh, this film was also noted for best horror, cinematographer, director, and narrative. Okay, and so the greenie for best sound design goes to The Manitou by Allison Haskins, Addison Reynolds, and Josie Coddington from Upper Perkyoman High School. All right, let's watch the film. Congrats, guys. part of the high school is? Um, yeah. That would be the bottom of the pool. You have to go down into the pool, like you have to go into the pool area and there's a door that goes down to where they have all like the chemicals and filters and stuff like that. And um, that's probably the creepiest. I don't like going down there by myself. <laughs> oh, we gotta check that out. All right, let's split up. Brett, you go down there, and Addy and I will go this way. There's, a, there's an actual room that's below the area that I think that you guys are talking about. A whole other area. I don't even know what we're looking for. Gotta be some type of door or something? I think I found something. <sighs> Guys, I think there's something written on these rocks. I think we should take them. for a second. Turn off satellite mode. Click that. Oh my god. Wait. What are these symbols? I've seen that before. That's the Manitou.
We need to put this all back now. We just gotta put them back. We just gotta put the rocks back. I, we, we, we can't drop them. Come on, let's go. Hello? Is somebody down there? Oh no. Turn your light on. We need to put him back. Hello, my name is Carl Wooden, and I'm the president of Aztec Multimedia. It's my pleasure to announce the top three experimental films for the 2022 Greenfield Youth Film Festival. In third place is a film that was also nominated for Best Cinematography, Sound Design, and Director. Judges' comments include charming, original, sweet, a fun concept with good motion and cute character design. Our third place finisher is February 2nd by Deirdre McKenna Scudder, a junior at Garnet Valley High School. Second place goes to a film that was also nominated for Best Documentary, Narrative, Cinematography, Editing, Sound Effects, and Use of Practical Locations. Judges' comments include, I loved this film, simple but innovative idea, a wonderful exploration of character, place and time, and that every kitchen tells a story, and so did you. Second place goes to My Mother's Kitchen by Lucy Taylor, a junior at Abington High School. And last but not least, our first place experimental film was one of the very best that personally I've ever watched in all my years associated with the Greenfield Film Festival. In addition to winning Best Experimental Film, it was also nominated for Best Sound Effects and director. Other judges' comments included masterful and creative storytelling, and I had never heard of Holodomor until I saw this film. With what's going on in Ukraine now, this is an important film. The Greenie for Best, Experiment, best Experimental Film goes to Holodomor by Anna Lisa Medinska, a senior at Abington High School. Congratulations, everyone.
Oh, it's still remote. So, so John's got it now. He knows it. Wow, this is such an honor. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking Jill Feldman and the Greenfield Film Festival for making this all possible. I'd like to especially thank Mr. Quigley for being an awesome teacher and for lending me his camera for way longer than he should have, sorry. Um, I'd like to thank my brother who let me shove a camera into his face as he was eating Chinese food. And most importantly, I'd like to thank my very own mother who was the star of the show. This one goes out to you, mom. So thank you all for this big honor.
I thank you Greenfield for this award and uh, the judges who saw potential in my work and Miss Jill Feldman who gives this opportunity to high schoolers to uh, practice their filmmaking skills and participate in this contest. Uh, the purpose of my film Hold the Mod was to share the story of my family and um, shed light on the concept of genocide which is uh, widely overlooked in the American school system. And I actually filmed this prior to the events of February 24th which is when uh, the Russian troops invaded Ukraine. And uh, so what happened in the whole of the mod that it widely pertains to uh, what's happening in the cities of Kherson, Mariupol, Luhansk, Kharkiv, Donetsk, and many more. Thank you, Islava Ukraini. Hi, I'm Richard Keith. I'm one of the judges for the Greenfield Film Festival, and I am here to present an award today. But first, I'm going to present you with a little fact. Did you know that in 1964, a movie was made for 500 bucks? Can you believe that? And it made a profit of just one dollar. The guy who made the film was 17, so he probably borrowed that money from his parents. And the movie was called Firelight. Can you guess who the filmmaker was? Well, it was none other than Steven Spielberg. And if you look it up, you'll see that many great filmmakers have gotten their start with sci-fi. And I think this film might be a great start to a very long career for this young filmmaker. I personally very much enjoyed this film. Uh, me and the other judges felt uh, that it was a really clever concept, uh, really inventive cinematography, and the director used music super effectively to set the tone and add to the suspense, and it had me on the edge of my seat to the very end. So, without any further ado, the Greenie for Best Sci-Fi Film goes to Winner Takes All by Ian Callahan Kenna and Andrew Wright, students at Philadelphia Kappa High School. So now, if you haven't seen the film, you're in for a treat. Why don't you join me and watch Winner Take All. Welcome, May. How do you know my name? That is not important. Welcome to my game. I, I'm actually having second thoughts about this. That is not how it works. Best two out of three. Your first role. Congratulations, you've won. I, I don't understand. Why can't I leave? <laughs> That's not how it works. I won. Why can't I leave? I'll be seeing you, May. No, I, I won. Why can't I? I won! I won! No! No, I won!
How's it going, Greenfield Youth Film Festival? My name is James Trelli, and I'm a producer and animator at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. And today I have the honor of presenting the award for Best Cinematography. The judges spoke loudly and clearly about this next film. The cinematography is considered by many to be the film element that makes a film pop, and is the difference between a movie and a video. Some of the words used by judges to describe this film were well shot and put together, excellent use of tension and music, and great use of a camera. All of the judges who watched it nominated it for Best Cinematography. So, without further ado, this year's Greenie for Best Cinematography is indeed a film that pops. Congratulations to Caleb Hamm and Owen Buffington from Oxford Area High School for their film Porcelain. Let's watch the film.
Hello, everyone. I'm Francesco Sedita from Penguin Young Readers, and I'm also the proud publisher of Mad Libs, the world's greatest word game. I'm so happy to be here with you today. This year, the Floral Noun at the Film Festival decided to try something new for the group project and reached out to me to see if we could make some Mad Libs movies together. Of course, I said yes. Two of the teacher mentors wrote a Mad Libs and sent the students the list of words needed to fill in the script. And then the school sent back the word choices and then they received their script filled out by another school. Exclamation! I must say that you all did Mad Libs so proud. It was spontaneous, it was funny, it was silly, exactly what Mad Libs is all about. I applaud all of you and thank you so much for all of your work. Okay, so the winning school will receive a gift card in addition to a number, Mad Libs. And so before we get to the winner, I would like to speak about the runners up for a moment, uh, who also received prizes. First, the first runner up is George Noun for The Princess. Congratulations. And next, Philadelphia Kappa for their The Accountant. Congratulations to you as well. Okay, it's the big moment now. Drum roll, please. This year's group project winner is the super duper adjective Abington High School for their film, The Scientist. Congratulations to you. Let's verb it now. You all did adjective. In a world fraught by human singing, one school needs a paintbrush. But their only weapon against the evil ventriloquist is a disgusting boot. Just when it seems all hope is lost, a sweaty scientist enters with a flaming hot Cheeto on his shoulder. Son of a Easy for you to say. Are you terrified? We need to barf. A tale as gross as time, filled with betrayal. You said you would never Google us. Suspense. There's only 28 seconds to chortle! And French onion soup. What's that now? A story so belligerent, only Abington High School could tell. Eugenia Ebert effuses. Masochistic and filled with imagination. It is not to be missed. Cinema will never be cordial again. The Scientist. Premiering at the Greenfield Accordion Festival. Coming to a bathroom near you. Our final award tonight is for Best Narrative Film. Let me say this. Any professional filmmaker will tell you, getting a good story, good light, sound, and acting all together in a five to six minute piece is no small task. Not to mention taking what's inside, here, and presenting it on a screen 20 feet long and luminous takes courage. We're going to celebrate that hard work and courage. Keep all this in mind as we watch these final three movies. All three filmmakers will receive a check or a gift card as their prize. In third place, judges were saying this piece was really well done, good sound design, dialogue, and acting. The use of music was fantastic, and the lead actor was solid. And the winner of third place for best narrative is Haven by Dylan Safko, Council Rock North High School. Congratulations, Dylan. Wonderful job. The runner-up for Best Narrative also grabbed the attention of our judges. They said, lovely, kind, joyous, and I agree. I felt this piece showed a wonderfully bold and creative approach not used by a lot of professional filmmakers. That's a compliment. The use of animated characters with live action motivated the narrative and the emotional plot. Second place for best narrative is New Perspective by Ziggy Hensley, Philadelphia Kappa High School. Congratulations, Ziggy. Really good work. In first place as this year's best narrative, judges heralded this filmmaker's ability to do it all. 
Judges said this was very enjoyable to watch. A really solid horror comedy that is genuinely funny, genuinely scary, and in my personal opinion, absolutely delicious. And the greenie for best narrative film of 2022 is After Hours by Ryan Ferraro, senior at Roxborough High School. Congratulations, Ryan. Really great work. Congratulations to all of you. And remember, don't let anyone ever tell you who you are inside. And don't be afraid to let those ideas run free. And most importantly, never ever give your subject a spinning chair. Now let's watch those three winners. Aaron? Hey, what's up, man? Nothing much. Same stuff, different day. <sighs> I haven't seen you in a minute. I know, yeah. I, I've just been dealing with stuff. You know, family stuff. Are you still doing guitar lessons by chance? <laughs> sure am. Kids can be quite the handful. Some harder than others, but that's never stopped me before, right? <laughs> Reminds me of when your mom first dropped you off on one of my gigs. Way back in the day. What's it been, like six years now? Yeah, yeah, it was. I miss those days, man. <laughs> How's your mom, anyway? I know she was the whole reason you stopped coming. Then you uh, just sort of vanished on us recently. Uh, she's, she's okay. Uh, seems to be getting worse by the day. Man, listen, I, I don't mean to pry, but is there any way I can help? If there was a proper way to answer that, I'd say yes. But it's so variable. I'll handle it until my dad gets back, at least. I've known you for a while, man. And you've got a strong soul. Hang in there. I will. Well, I don't want her to start worrying, so I gotta get inside. But it was really nice catching up with you. All right, bud. Nice seeing you, man. And listen, when all this is over, come by the studio. Place really doesn't sound the same without you there playing something. All right, man, for sure. Hello? Is this Aaron Jennings? Yes. I hate to bring the bad news, but your mother didn't cooperate when we called her. Just shoot it straight, Doc. What's the problem? It looks like your father stopped paying for your mother's medication. Unless he starts up again, your mom will only get worse within the coming months. 
Is there any way I can pay for her? Since you're underage, it is required for a legal adult to pay for them. I'm sorry, son. If your father follows up with the bill, then I'll give you a call. I'm sorry for everything. I don't seem to know who I am anymore, you know? And now you're taking care of me when I should be taking care of you. doesn't feel right. I shouldn't be the one needing to be taken care of. Mom, it's okay. I, I don't care about any of that. As long as I'm around, I'll be right here with you. I love you. I love you too.
Hello, I'm Ziggy Hensley. I just wanted to say thank you so much for this opportunity and to everyone who helped me make this film possible, especially to my family who helped me very much during this difficult year. guys here they officially declared that nerd john dead this morning that guy probably just ran away again like that other nerd travis from the year before or or what watch brian tom's gonna make another case again about the rocks for cool vampires oh, i'm saying why so much blood and no body who cares <laughs> this class is so freaking boring i'm gonna fall asleep like i usually do and then mr phillips is gonna be yelling trying to wake me up educational system mr reed just like you do a bio with jenkins brian wake up yeah and the last time he was in damien's class he said something pretty odd Brian Reed, wake up! I swear to the unholy dark lord I could murder that kid. Okay, vampire boy. Out of my way, losers. See, I mean, like Janet. All the teachers love her. All she does is have her hand up all class. I swear, as soon as her hand goes up, my head goes down. Take a seat, dumb wads. Oh, Mr. Reed is here. Nice of you to join us. Maybe this time we won't have to hear your snoring. I don't know. Let me pull out my crystal ball and look into the future. Okay, so today, gang, we're going to talk about the economic history of Sweden in the 1970s. In 1970, the economic minister discussed cheese finance. Oh, crap. Come on in and join us, Mr. Reed. What's going on here? So glad you could join us, Mr. Reed. What does it look like is going on here? Are, are you okay? Mm, mm. Of course Janet's okay. She's just joining our special club. We usually only reserve the best like Janet for our Dark Lord. But would you like to join our club, Brian? Uh, nah, <laughs> I think I'm gonna let Janet handle this one. Though. The, uh, the door's locked, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, come on, Brian. Join us. Lucky Cross, I put all my faith in you. Keep these vampires away. Wait. You think we're vampires? <laughs> <laughs> we're not vampires. We're cannibals. <laughs> were you dreaming of your life once you graduate? What? Nothing, nothing. Read. Seriously, bro. You gotta get your act together. Or else, when you graduate, you'll get eaten alive. <laughs> get out of my classroom, Reed. The buses leave soon. <laughs> oh. Okay.
Hi, my name is Ryan Ferrero. I directed After Hours. I would first like to start off by thanking Miss Jill Greenfield, my mom, and Jaime Macon who wrote the script. I'd like to thank my awesome cast and crew for doing a great job. I'd like to thank Roxborough High School for letting my cast, my crew, and I uh, to film this. And I hope you all enjoy it because we had a lot of fun making it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. After tonight, you will be able to watch all of the films on our YouTube channel. And please join us next year in person for the 15th Greenfield Youth Film Festival. Have a good night.